Welcome to Canteen Cup. My name is Scott. What exciting times we live in. Seems like this is uh, either the beginning of a new era or it's the beginning of the end. Utopia or dystopia. I guess it depends on how you look at it. I will tell you that in all my years, I've never quite seen anything like this. And I've been a prepper of one sort or another for most of the most of those years. And I've seen the ups and the downs and the sideways. But this time it's different. And you know, that's not part of this discussion as to why it's different but it is different and that you need to treat it differently I think in today's world um, you have to make some hard choices and the first choice is you're going to have to get off of the proverbial prepper fence I think you're going to have to make some decisions on what type of prepper you are. And I mean this with all sincerity. Like I said, I have been prepping for most of my life. I started as a teenager. But at this particular time, this particular moment, I am taking steps that I have never taken before. And that should tell you something. So my point is, you need to decide where you sit. And you can't sit on the fence. Well, I guess you could, but you know, either either you're either you're going to prep or you're not and you can't half step prepping or not I think uh, for most of you that are on my channel and again I appreciate everybody who has joined my channel I appreciate all my newcomers welcome I appreciate you I am trying to help you this is not a scare video. I don't do scare videos. However, at this point in time, I'm just kind of relaying to you some of the things that I'm doing. And some of the things that I'm doing are things that I have thought about in the past. But I have never put those actions into motion. And at this go around, I am taking my preparations a step further and I counsel you all to do the same. There are things going on, there are machinations, there are, you know, I don't, I don't want to call them theories, but things are happening that I have never seen before. And our country is reacting in ways that I never thought it would before. So, that's why I say that this time is when you need to really think about where you stand in your community as a prepper. Now, this is not a, <clears throat> this is not a how-to video, not really. But I think most of you here on my channel have an idea of what to do. If not, there's plenty of other people out there that will tell you how to do it. I'll put a, I'll put a plug in to my, my friend, Pastor Joe Fox, over at Viking Preparedness. He's got hundreds of videos to tell you what to do. Tell him I sent you, Canteen Cup. He'll, he knows me. And uh, join his channel. Even better yet, join his patreon channel it's a dollar a month but i think the information is good i am a member of that channel and i don't do a whole lot of 
<clears throat> excuse me, I don't do a whole lot of subscriptions to channels, but, but his I do. So that being said, if you are one of those preppers that are jumping on the prepping more side of the fence instead of prepping less or none, then you need to have a plan. A plan is important. It is your guidance on what you're going to do when. You know, call it an SOP, a standard operating procedure, whatever you want to call it. Have things in place so that you are not reacting to situations, but you can follow through with your plans if something does arise and there's a large difference between the two. So have a plan. And your plan is probably, as you look at what's going on today, you're going to be planning for more than one thing. I know we talk about bugging out. Do you have a bug out plan? Okay, well do you? Is it written down somewhere? And that's the important part. I mean, do you really have a firm grasp of what you're going to do if you have to leave your property? Do you have a at least a vague idea of where you're going to go? And I don't mean something as benign as, well, I'm going to go into a national park and live off the land. Do you have a destination? And do you know how you're going to get there? Do you have a plan for food? Do you have a plan for water? Do you have a plan to maintain sanitary conditions? And yes, do you have a plan to defend your family? Notice what I'm saying is defend your family. I'm not talking about any offensive operations. Just protecting you and yours. And that's what's important to consider at least today. When talking about this, can't keep all this stuff in your head okay you need to write it down somewhere I would suggest that you don't put a lot of this stuff in your computer because if your computer is connected to the internet there may or may people may or may not have access to your files I don't go down that path I, I think most of people's stuff is at least fairly secure That being said, typically, and I have a I have a son who works in cybersecurity, and he is well paid, and he works on some very sensitive projects. And typically, when we have this conversation, what he says is the weakest link is usually the person. So if you can maintain your integrity of your systems with your own means, you're probably fairly secure. The other thing is, most people that really would do the looking, they really don't care about you. Not unless you're doing other stupid things. But most, most of the time, they don't care. They can't look at 330 million people's emails and... Uh, cloud drives and all this other stuff. They're, they're, only, they're looking for that small percentage of people that actually may be a threat. And as a prepper, you should not be a threat. Like I said, if you are, if you are preparing to defend your family, that's what you should be doing. Is preparing to protect you and yours. So going back. What I suggest you do is that you start a journal. And the journal could be many things. It could be a book of lists. It could be your thoughts, your personal thoughts, your thoughts on prepping, your thoughts about your family, any of that. That's all important in your journal because when you write it down, number one, it sticks in your head a little more. And I'm talking about writing with your hands, not typing on a computer. There is a difference. Uh, I've been journaling on and off for the last 30 years and I have journaled in notebooks and I have journaled on my phone uh, with a journaling app and I get far more 
mileage out of writing it by hand. But you need to start thinking about what are you going to do and what do you need. And it needs to go beyond, well, I've got it in my head. Because you know, your head can only concentrate on a couple things at a time. And, and you move away from that one thing you feel you have to have enough and you'll forget. Or you will, in your head, you will reorder your priority without re, re, ah, realizing it. <laughs> and that'll, that may cause you trouble down the road. I suggest you journal. I suggest not only do you put lists of things in your journal, but also your personal thoughts on things. Because it may help you in the future when you can go back and you come across a personal conflict you can at least go back and say well this is what I thought a couple months ago now how do you journal number one there is no right and wrong way to journal uh, really the idea of journaling is capturing your thoughts and keeping yourself pointed in the right direction in today's world with so much information out there that we are swayed one way or the other um, consumerism even in the prepper community is out of control a lot of times people are buying things they don't need and will never use uh, guilty 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 so I'm trying to stop that I'm trying to help you to stop that so that you can take your money and put it where it needs to go. That being said, what you really need to journal is number one, you need a notebook. I would get a, a bound notebook. In other words, it's hard bound with hard covers like a book because you don't want to rip those pages out. You want to keep those pages so that you can refer back to them and that you should get a decent pen. So for a field journal, I'd recommend you get a pen like a Fisher Space Pen. I think some of the Zebras are okay. The uh, Sakura Micron pens. <clears throat> Any pen that has a permanent ink that is waterproof. Uh, you like fountain pens and I've, I've just discovered fountain pens and I, I'm all about them I really like them you can even get waterproof inks for them um, but get a good pen get a good notebook and keep that notebook handy so that when you have a thought in the middle of the day you can write it down or um, you can do what I do is I carry these little field books and I can write it in my field book and then when I get home I can transfer that thought into my regular notebook. And then once that notebook gets filled, don't throw it away. You will go back into it. Now brands, uh, brands for notebooks. Um, yeah, there's a couple I like. There's Moleskine, which it's okay. It's not my favorite. I have a couple of them. In fact, I'm working in one now. I, it's okay they're okay and they're easy to get if you want to step it up a little bit the right in the rain notebooks are good they're made here in the US they're, they're made on waterproof paper and you can get them in different sizes I like those I have a couple of those that I have used as journals um, I do like them there is a German company it is called Lightroom 1917 these are a little bit pricier and I think it's spelled and I'm probably a little wrong here but it's German it is L E U C H T U R M 1917 that'll at least get you close Amazon sells those I like the A5 size there's also another company a French company called Rodia, R-H-O-D-I-A, and they make nice paper. Um, 
but again, you can go, you can go in the, the, you know, China Mart or Staples or Office Depot and just get a steno pad, whatever. But I like the bound books because they are sturdier, they are more permanent, and you don't want to rip the pages out. Now, along with that, I also keep what I call a scratch notebook nearby. Uh, my little field book here is an example. I have one on my desk that I keep open and again that's a bound book and I just keep all my scratchings in there in other words if I'm researching something I want to write down some numbers real quick or I want to write down a name real quick I put it in that scratch notebook and then later on if I need to put it into my journal I'll do that when that gets filled up I store that as a scratch notebook uh, you know sometimes I go back into those little notebooks and look for things I scratched on a, on a phone conversation or something. And I do that to keep my journal a little bit neat. My handwriting is not that good. So I do use that to keep it neat. So those are the notebooks, uh, pens. I try to get a pen that has a permanent ink. I do use my fountain pens right now, do not have waterproof ink. And so what I do is I have a can of uh, Krylon. It's called Preserve It. I just take a spray can and spray that on the page to help set the inks. But uh, in the near future, I'm going to get some waterproof inks from my pens, my fountain pens, because I do like drawing with them. It is a new experience for me, and I think they're cool. Um, a little more pricier than regular pens, but there's other pens. You know, check for archival quality inks. Now, if you don't know how to journal and you really don't know where to start, start there's a bunch of stuff on the internet and one system that I am moving into that I really like or at least I think I like is called bullet journaling and that's bullet like as in a bullet you shoot out of a gun and it's called bullet journaling and there's a website called bulletjournal.com and they will give you the how to start it and I really like the system is it allows you to combine a task list with a journaling, with maintaining other lists and things you want to do. And it's a very fluid and very well thought out system. And so if you, if you like that, I would suggest that they have a book. Um, the hardbound book is pricey, but you get on Kindle. I think I paid nine or ten dollars for the book it's a good read and there's a huge amount of resources on the internet all for bullet journaling so I would suggest you do that and start making your list checking them twice start going over your plans and then have have some plans you know think about what you're gonna do uh, think about if you have to leave, think about your guns. Think about, you know, think about the, you know, the climate you're in as far as um, social and economical, and think how you're going to persevere that. What would happen if tomorrow all the banks shut down? What would happen to you? you know, what would happen if you not only had to flee your home, but you may have to flee your country? What would happen? It's just some food for thought. But like I said, these are interesting times, and it's either it's either going to be a, we're heading for a new era, or we're heading <laughs> we're heading for a dystopia. So, you know, heaven and hell, good, bad, black, white. Those are those are terms that don't really apply anymore. But what does apply? is what is good for you and what is good for your family and what is good for your community. So I went a little long this time. I didn't plan on going this long, but I had a lot to say. And so please, please take a few moments. Please take a lot of moments and start planning. Start writing stuff down. Start getting to where you are as ready as you can be. To quote my friend Pastor Joe, do the best you can with what you got where you're at. That's all I have for you out there. Everybody stay safe and stay secure.